judges, shuf team. Chapter 2. Now the angel of Adonai came up from Gilgal to Bochim and said, I brought you up out of Egypt, led you into the land I swore to your fathers and said, I will never break my covenant with you. You, for your part, are not to make any covenant with the inhabitants of this land, but must tear down their altars. However, you have paid no attention to what I said. What is this that you have done? This is why I also said I will not drive them out before you, but they will be on your flanks, and their gods will become a snare for you. When the angel of Adonai spoke these words to all the people of Israel, they began crying and wailing at the top of their voices. So the people of Israel, they called the name of that place Bochim, crying and sacrificed there to Adonai. When Yahushua had sent the people away, the people of Israel had gone each one to his assigned property in order to take possession of the land. The people served Adonai throughout Yeshua's life and throughout the lives of all the older men who outlived Yahashua and who had seen all the great works of Adonai which he had done for Israel. When Yahashua, the son of Nun, the servant of Adonai, died, he was 110 years old. And they buried in him near the boundary of his property in Timnat Heres, in the hills of Ephraim, north of Mount Gaash. When the entire generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation arose that knew neither Adonai nor the what he had done for Israel. Then the people of Israel did what was evil from Adonai's perspective and served the Baalim. They abandoned Adonai the god of their fathers who had brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods selected from the gods of the peoples around them and worshipped them. This made Adonai angry. They abandoned Adonai and served Baal and Ashtaroth. The anger of Adonai blazed against Israel, and he handed them over to pillagers who plundered them and to their enemies around them so that they could no longer resist their enemies. Whenever they launched an attack, the power of Adonai was against them. So the thing turn, things turned out just as Adonai had said would happen and had sworn to them they were in dire distress. But then Adonai raised up judges who rescued them from the power of those who were plundering them. If they did not pay attention to their judges, but made whores of themselves to other gods and worshipped them, they quickly turned away from the path on which their ancestors had walked, the way of obeying Adonai's Mitzvahot. They failed to do this. When Adonai raised up judges for them, Adonai was with the judge and delivered them from the hands of their enemies throughout the lifetime of the judge. For Adonai was moved to pity by their groanings under those oppressing and crushing them. But after the judge died, they would relapse into worse behavior than that of their ancestors, following other gods to serve and worship them. They abandoned none of their practices or stubborn ways. So the anger of Adonai blazed against Israel. He said, because this nation violates my covenant, which I ordered their fathers to obey, and they don't pay attention to what I say, in the future I will not expel ahead of them any of the nations that Yahashua left when he died. This is how I will test Israel to see whether or not they will keep the way of Adonai, living according to it as their ancestors did. So Adonai allowed those nations to remain where they were without quickly driving them out. He did not hand them over to Yahashua. What is this covenant that the angels spoke about? When this angel that came up from Gilgal to Bochim and said, I let Ted you up from Egypt and brought you to the land of which I swore to your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you, and you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of the lands. You shall tear down their altars, but you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? What is this covenant? This is the covenant that the fathers out of Egypt came up out of the sea 
when they, they, they came out to the sea and the Egyptians pursued them. And this covenant is the covenant of the commandments of God. It is a witness that you uh, will have no other gods. Take heed that you love the Lord your God. He will fight for you. May you be courageous and do all in the book of the law of Moses. And that you not submit yourselves or serve these gods of other nations, nor bow down to them, nor make mention of them, but hold fast to the Lord your God. And if you do that, God will drive out these nations before you. And one man shall chase a thousand for the Lord your God. It is he who fights for you as he promises. Therefore, take careful heed to yourselves that you love the Lord your God. <clears throat> or else, if indeed you do go back and cling to the remnant of these nations, these that remain among you and make marriages with them and go into them, and they you know for certain that the Lord your God will no longer drive out these nations before you. But they shall be snares and traps to you, and scourges on every side, and thorns in your eyes, until you perish from this good land, which the Lord your God has given you. These commandments, this covenant, is in Deuteronomy 5, 6. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me, and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Observe the Shabbat day to keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your ox, nor your donkey nor any of your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates, that your male servant and your female servant may rest as well as you. And remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there by a mighty hand, and by an outstretched arm, therefore the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, that your days may be long, and that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witnesses against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, and you shall not desire your neighbor's house, his field, his male servant, his female servant, or his ox, his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. <clears throat> These are the commandments of God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and as they shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost on your house. And you must remember the Lord your God, that he will test you, and that he, it is he that gives you the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant with you. Now, the essence of the law in Deuteronomy 10, 12 is, And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for your good. Indeed, heaven and the highest heavens belong to the Lord your God, also the earth with all that is in it. The Lord delighted only in your fathers to love them, and he chose their descendants after them, you above all peoples, as it is this day. 
Therefore, circumcise the foreskin of your heart and be stiff-necked no longer. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality nor takes a bribe. He administers justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the stranger, giving him food and clothing. Therefore, love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God, you shall serve him, and to him you shall hold fast and take oaths in his name. He is your praise, and he is your God who has done for you these great and awesome things which your eyes have seen. And you, down to Deuteronomy 11, Therefore you shall love the Lord your God and keep his charge, his statutes, his judgments, and his commandments always. And you shall pray to him. Seek him and seek him alone. So the commandments and prayer are the covenant of God. This, these commandments are the rule of law that the judges would sit and judge the people in the time of judges because every man did what was right in his own sight. Now the fulfilled the full house of Israel is the Lord's house, and judgment also is in the Lord's house now, 1 Peter 4, 17. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God, and if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as the faithful creator. Therefore, God will and does raise up judges that anointing to confront. And Samuel was such a one. He was a prophet in Israel who judged Israel according to God's laws and commandments. Let's look at the judgment in God's house in 1 Corinthians 6. Dare any of you have a matter against another? Go to the law before the unrighteous and not before the saints. Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then you have judgments concerning things pertaining to this life, do you appoint those who are at least esteemed by the church to judge? I say this to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you, not even one who will be able to judge between his brethren, but brother goes to law against brother, and that before unbelievers? Now, therefore, it is already an utter failure for you that you go to law against one another. Why did you not rather accept wrong? Why did you not rather let yourself be cheated? No, yourselves do wrong and cheat, and you do these things to your brethren. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Here the Apostle Paul clearly lays out in Corinthians that these carnal Christians are dragging each other to court and they should rather be wronged than go and have unbelievers judge their matters. And don't be deceived. He lays out the unrighteous works that do not inherit the kingdom of God. Fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, homosexuals, sodomites, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners, these people will not inherit the kingdom of God. Look, verse 12, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Foods for the stomach and the stomach for foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality before the Lord. 
and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise up by his us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. First John 4, 7. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loves us. Now, if someone says, oh, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. This is very clear very direct that the the acts of covenant keeping uh, God's uh, moral laws are reflected in the treatment of one another. 1 Corinthians 13 definitely illustrates this in a great way. Now, I want to... Um, Talk about 1 Corinthians 2, and I, brethren, came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, okay? Declaring to you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and fear and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, not children in the faith. Okay, Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, or had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. <clears throat> but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God, for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. Or who has known the mind of the Lord, that he, may, that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of the Christ. Now, let me remind you in the context of this passage, that is for those who are mature in Christ, who have the gift of the wisdom of God. Okay? Those who are mature 
We speak wisdom among those who are mature, not those that are immature in their walk or in their understanding of the mind of Christ and the word of God. These are those who judge. As it says in Corinthians, isn't there a wise man among you? So that James, who is wise and understanding among you, let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. James 4. Uh, why do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is the enmity, the enemy with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives us more grace. Therefore, it says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Don't speak evil of one another, brothers. He who speaks evil of a brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. Therefore, there is one lawgiver who is able to save and destroy. Who are you to judge another? Now, I want to talk. Now, this is about brothers. This is not, okay, and God is the ultimate judge. And we must go... And you have to look at the whole context of an instruction in God's word. You don't instruct elders. Um, if you're, uh, you know, a teenager, spiritually speaking. And uh, this is God's grace. And there are qualifiers about who an overseer is. And you have to have good testimony. And you have to be not double tongued or wine or greedy for money. Uh, holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. Now, there are very few people in the Western culture who hold the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. And they have to be tested and serve as deacons. And they have to be reverent, not slanderous, temperous, faithful in all things. And they have to serve well. And they have to be temperate, sober-minded, the bishop, blameless, <clears throat> of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, not given to wine nor violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous, one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. Not a novice, lest being puffed up with pride, he fall into the same condemnation of, as the devil. And so he must have a good testimony for those who are out, who are out uh, side of the faith. Now, <clears throat> you are to honor elders who rule well, because they are worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. 
the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not receive an accusation against an elder except from two or three witnesses. Those who are sinning rebuke in the presence of all that the rest also may fear. I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that you observe these things without prejudice, doing nothing with partiality. This is about judging in God's house and who the elders are. You don't bring accusations against elders. Unless you have two or three people coming. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a serious thing to accuse an elder. And that is one who is mature in the faith and in wisdom. And has the mind of God and who's been laboring in doctrine and teachings. And it is the uh, wise men in the body who are to judge disputes. Because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And our, we judge according to the counsel of the written word. The commandments of God. And the instruction of, of um, our children. That they be orderly according to God's principles. And his ways. As addressed in 1 Corinthians 5. Uh, judging in the body it has actually been reported there is sexual sin among you and it is sexual sin of kind that is condemned even by the pagans a man is living with his stepmother and you stay proud shouldn't you rather have felt some sadness that would have led you to remove from your company the man who's done this thing for i myself even though i am absent physically am with you spiritually and i have already judged the man who's done this as if it, i were present in the name of the Lord Yeshua, when you are assembled with me, present, present spiritually, and the power of our Lord Yeshua among us, hand over such a person to the adversary, for his old nature to be destroyed, so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Your boasting is not good. Don't you know the saying, it takes only a little chametz to leaven a whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old chametz. That's leaven. So that you can be a new batch of dough, because in reality you are unleavened. For our Pesach lamb, the Messiah has been sacrificed. So let us celebrate the Seder, not with the leftover chametz, the chametz of wickedness and evil, but with the matzah of purity and truth, that is, the bread. In my earlier letter, I wrote to you not to associate with people who engage in sexual immorality. I didn't mean the sexually immoral people outside your community, that is your kehila, or the greedy, or the thieves, or the idol worshippers, for then you would have to leave the world altogether. No, what I wrote you was not to associate with anyone who is supposedly a brother, but who also engages in sexual immorality, is greedy, worships idols, and is abusive, gets drunks, or steal. Such a person you shouldn't even eat. Well, what business is it of mine to judge outsiders? Isn't it those who are part of the community that you should be judging? God will judge those who are outside. Just expel the evildoer from among yourselves. Now, look, there is a place of authority and delegated authority. God has positions and places in the body of Christ. And he promotes and he demotes according to submission and obedience to the discipline of the will. Jesus learned, uh, was made perfect through his sufferings, part of discipline in sufferings, okay? And then God releases, um, as it says in John 17, we become one with him and we understand whatever the Father, in John 17, Jesus said, I do nothing except for what I see the Father in heaven doing. I and the Father are one. So if you ask anything that is the Father in heaven's will and that Yeshua is in, through Yeshua and is in agreement with, then it will be done. This is really a brief definition of the mind of Christ. This is prayer, accurate, not missing the mark, Torah prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is... Um, how we come into our positions in the Lord's temple, we are at the house of prayer for all nations. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. And then Jude 14, now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all. 
to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Even so, come Lord Jesus.